This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hi, Stylized Station. My name is Elizabeth Lears, but everyone calls me Liz. I am a 3D prop and environment artist. Today, I will be giving a breakdown of my process of making a stylized weapon with hand-painted textures, utilizing Maya, 3D Coat, Photoshop, and Marmoset Toolbag. This is the final render in Marmoset. This weapon, Blade of the Astral Gardener, is based off a concept by Maeve Broadbin. Go check her work out, it's pretty awesome. So I already have the model completed here. But when I begin modeling something, I always import the concept on an image plane. And I like to take some time to think about how I'm going to model something and what I'm going to duplicate, what will be mirrored, etc. I think for a low poly weapon like this, sort of going for like a World of Warcraft style, I try to keep things low poly and efficient. Basically only modeling to match the silhouette of the concept and painting in all the other details. So for this model, everything is mirrored along the Z axis. So I pretty much modeled only half of it so I only had to UV half of it, and then I mirrored everything over and welded the verts. I try to always keep my UVs clean and efficient because that just makes painting things easier. This weapon in particular definitely had some weird wonky curvy bits, but, but I still tried to make things as clean and easy to work with. So once I have everything modeled and the UVs are laid out, I actually export this half before I mirror anything over so I can get a nice clean AO bake without any duplicate UVs because that can lead to a lot of errors. It just saves so much time not having to paint those out. Here's the complete model mirrored along the Z-axis and have uh, these little brackets. The bottom crystal are also duplicated along the X-axis. I also then like to explode the model, move it down a bit on the y-axis because it just helps with painting in 3D coat. Makes it easier with all these parts that are on top of each other. So here we are in 3D coat. Since this is a hand painted texture and I will be painting the lighting information in, hit two to get an unlit mode. Now this makes painting pretty difficult since you can't see anything. So I like to bake out and ambient occlusion texture. I like to pick the sphere and hemisphere option and bake that out. And uh, you can keep that on multiply if you want. I usually put it on soft light so it's not as harsh. And I also bake out a curvature map. I usually put that on soft light at a pretty low opacity. All this gets painted over pretty much, but it just helps with the painting process. In a new layer, also on soft light, I like to bake a top-down gradient. And you can do that and just hit layer to fill the entire layer. There we go. And then you can hit control P to bring it on over to Photoshop. And I like to colorize the ambient occlusion map using an adjustment mask to usually, you know, make it like a 
purpley color or something for shadows and uh, change the curvature map to usually a warm yellow. This all gets painted over, but it's a very good starting base and helps just add some richness to your texture. So we save that out and then hop on back to 3D Coat. And then I like to put a hard light layer above all of that and put down the base colors. One of the cool things about 3D Coat is you can put an image in the color palette. So I have the concept right here so I can make sure everything matches and looks all right. Since I had just half of the model in here so I could get the AO bakes without any errors, I'm now going to go ahead and import the actual model with the exploded model underneath it to get the actual painting started. A little trick I like to do to help me get started with the hand painted textures is to sort of make a secondary AO. I make a layer set to multiply and with a 50% gray brush, I paint in, you know, I sort of block in all the details and it really helps me visualize where things are going to go before I really start getting into rendering the materials and make sure that everything is on the model and matches the concept. Now we get to the best part and the actual texture painting. So the way I like to organize things is I sort of break down the layers per different materials. So you can see here I have one for the blade, the opals, metal, I have the wooden cloth in the same layer, and then highlights and hot spots on top of that. I'm kind of old school and like to paint things on separate layers, but keeping the material separate can be really helpful, especially if you need to, say, change the color of the metal or you want to make some color variations. I think the biggest piece of advice I could give for hand painted textures, well, any texturing in general really, is to always work big to small. Always make sure your big forms are properly lit before you get into the nitty gritty of all the micro details and little scratches and dings and highlights. I always leave that stuff for last. Typically how I work is I try to take one material to completion before working on the next. Sometimes I'll want to bounce around between, like, say, the wood and the metal, but on this one I worked on each one to completion. I tend to handle things by blocking things in in 3D coat, making sure there are no seams, and then going over to Photoshop because the brush engine there is just so much better. So I was initially a little intimidating about painting the opals because that's something I've never painted before. And I think in the case of that, it's important to look up reference. Even though something is stylized and I have a very finished concept here, I don't want to just make a copy of a copy and I want to understand why the material behaves that way what it actually looks like. So I actually looked up just on Google image search some real life examples of opals to just get a better idea of how to paint them in, all the different little flecks and everything like that. The metal was definitely challenging because there's so many ornate details. A really helpful piece of advice is to don't zoom in at like 300% and make yourself crazy painting all the small tiny little details because they're not going to read from afar and as this is meant to be like a low poly world of warcraft style weapon you know if this was being used by a character in a game you'd see it like that <laughs> so i want to make sure it has all the cool details of the concept but that it reads correctly and you know, you're not obsessing over the tiniest little things. As I mentioned before, I go back and forth a lot between Photoshop and 3D Coat. I think I do the bulk of the painting in Photoshop and 3D Coat is primarily just to make sure things are placed where they are and to paint out any seams or anything like that. It's usually not too much of an issue, but some of the UVs like this curvy bit over here are a little wonky, so I had to go back and forth quite a bit just to make sure everything matched up correctly and there weren't any weird seams. I do the bulk of my painting with just the regular old hard round brush. For finishing touches, like the hot spots on these nice little shiny spots on the, the metal bits, I'll take a color dodge layer and paint those in with a soft round brush. People 
tend to get hung up on the like, oh, what brush did you use? But like I said, about 90% of my painting is done with just the hard round brush. And I sometimes use some of these brushes just for a little bit of texture or color variation as a final touch. It's not something I'd stress out about too much. Just try out some different brushes, play around, have fun, see what you like to use. I like to keep things clean and use as few layers as possible. So sometimes I want to try something out, make sure it's working, and then I'll merge it down just to keep things clean and concise. Like that is primarily how I worked on the opal. I did the different colored flecks on different layers and adjusted the opacity to sort of get the effect of some that are more faint than others. Now it's time to check things out in Marmoset. I import the model and set up the texture. For a one-off prop like this, I just set it up a very simple unlit diffuse map. I like to do a little bit of pro post-processing, like most notably a uh, little bit of a vignette. It adds a nice touch, and that's pretty much it. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can find me on ArtStation and Twitter. I love to talk about art and make new art friends. Thanks for watching. And thanks for Stylized Station for giving me this opportunity. Oh,